Oh, gamers. Gamers, gamers, gamers. We back at it. I figured we'd actually watch this one live. I kind of, I wanted to do it with the other one too, but I just didn't. I was like, oh, it's too late, but you know, it's too late again, but you know, it is what it is. Sometimes you just forget and you just sleep, you know? Sometimes you need to sleep. And that's me every day. <laughs> okay. Oh. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good day, and good time zone to you all. And welcome back to our second of three live streams to go ahead and talk about what's going to be coming. Why is streams Destiny running so quiet? Into the light on April 9th. As a reminder, the Destiny is available to all players just as was everything last week when we went ahead and had a chance to go ahead and walk through Onslaught. Uh, now, today we've obviously got a few topics that we touched on last week. We got a new social space to go ahead and check out. We're gonna look at some rewards, obviously, uh, and maybe a, a, an up close and personal look at the Brave Arsenal. But of course, I'm not the only one who's gonna be talking through it. I'm joined by an all-star cast of folks Let's go. on the Bungie development team. And I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> go on down the line and introduce them. If you were here last week, you obviously recognize his face, but uh, Tom Farnsworth, senior design lead. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, yeah. And, uh... A little bit about myself here. I've been yeah. at Bungie for. I swear the live streams are way too long. quiet. It's been a while, a decade uh, plus. And obviously, there's some stuff we're going to be looking at today that's kind of like full circle. Yeah. With, you know, the Space Tiger logo yep. in the light there from the early days of Destiny. And uh, I've been fortunate to, you know, I, I was able to place the Kavastov way back yeah. in, in Cosmo for you all to pick up. Oh, did and, you really? Yeah, that was that was something. I think I, obviously, it was the foundation. Teams are strong than heroes is a big team effort, but yeah. I, there's a few things that I, I'm really having had a chance working proud to, to interact with players and then there's some things i'm a little more inf inf infamous for like placing yeah. the the drop pods and homecoming this is a good dev stream <laughs> sweet um, so follow him on twitter let him know how you thought about that right and then over yeah. the past few years i've only working, seen uh, i've only seen yeah, one yeah, thing like i've only had one thing spoiled for me and it was one of the returning Thank weapons. Thank you very much for your hard work as someone who's played a lot of it. Uh, excited to go ahead and Which I hope it's not cancer this time. And of course, also... If you know, you know. ...by Chris Proctor, Senior Design Lead here at Bungie. Uh, Chris, for the fine folks at home who may not have heard you on a podcast or know anything about you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here at Bungie? Yeah, handy, thanks. Uh, yeah, I joined Bungie four and a half years ago as a weapons feature lead for Destiny 2. Um, so a bunch of Destiny... I should have brought this up on my Firefox uh, instead of Edge. ...into the light. That all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Going through like a bunch of greatest hits. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, it's going to be cool. We obviously have a lot of stuff to talk through with the Brave Arsenal today, and uh, greatest hits, I think, is probably the best way to do it. Yeah, I can them. boost it. And of course, last but very not There's least, down at the end, the one and only Kelsey Rice, systems designer here <laughs> at Bungie. Kelsey, how are you doing today? Hello, I'm doing great. All right, well, obviously, the, uh, the third verse, same as the second and the first. For the folks at home uh, who may not know you or know anything about your work, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here at Bungie? Yes, I'd love to. Um, first, yes, I'm a systems designer at Bungie. I've been here for about two and a half years, um, and I work on a lot of fun stuff like quests and pursuits and progressions. And quests and pursuits like and progression. Design, which the really fabric love. that holds all of our <laughs> adventures together, honestly. Yes. Very exciting. Well, obviously, you've had, had a big hand in Into the Light as well today. We're going to go ahead and dive into that here in just a bit. Um, but, you know, before we go ahead and dive on, and is there anything you guys are excited about today in particular, or should we just go ahead and show rather than just tell? What do you think? Let's show it is. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and, and dive on in. <clears throat> dive on in, rather. So we're going to start off. We have a brand new social space, the Hall of Champions, that we're going to go ahead and check on out. Kelsey, show you. Uh, Kelsey's the one who's responsible for taking us through that. So <laughs> shall you return to the throne world? Obviously. Is it louder for you guys, by the way? Uh, I turned it up a little bit, but there I don't know if it actually uh, now, well, translated the way, to the stream. Uh, Tom, Hall of Champions is, is a brand new social space here in Destiny 2. Uh, where is this? Where are we going to, like, where's this place been? Why are we checking it out now? So Shax has carved out just a, a little, little bit of the, okay, the good. backstage of the tower. Yeah. Uh, and you're gonna see a, a few little, little fun nods here. Yo. To, to Destiny history. Yep. All right. We're um, at it now on screen. Cool yeah, looking area. On screen here we got Sweepy Bot, uh, and this is actually the lead up to the Hall of Champions. <laughs> this is where they keep it all the time. <laughs> yeah. This is where you know th there's an off season for a, for a lot of the holiday events. Yeah. A little pile of snow. Yo, yo, wait, wait, hold up. Is that... <laughs> that, that looks like a recluse-esque weapon. This is interesting. All right, so we've I know one the weapon they're bringing back, so I wouldn't be surprised so if they're bringing back that one, too. That has uh, been hiding in plain view, potentially, for other sweeper bots or, or red jacks around I think tower. it's probably what's in their inventory right now. Stuff from uh, the... Uh... Uh, onslaught is ADU. Oh, that's right. Yeah, little, little Noah put it here himself. <laughs> they got no ammo. In, in, in all the space, 
Like, uh, if, if we just take a, a step forward, you're gonna see it. There we go. Here's the champions. Here's Yo! The champions. All right, so this um, is the Hall of Champions. And just like uh, Zer kind of carved out Eternity mm -hmm. for, uh, for the 30th anniversary, uh, Shax has, has kind of set this space aside for us and into the light where the, the, all your armor, your weapons. Attune the Recluse! This is going to be your, your home base for Into the Light. Excellent. Awesome. All right. Well, Kelsey, uh, can you go ahead and show us a little bit? We're going to go ahead and walk up here. We see a whole bevy of chests, actually. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and start there. Those, we, those are chests? How do we go ahead and start opening, cracking these open, rather? Yeah. So as you can see, this space is just full of chests. As you can see here, all the, the class icons on the floor, a little bit like 30th. Uh, you can come here Titan. to uh, redeem this currency, uh, trophies of bravery that you're going to earn. Trophies of onslaught. bravery. So it's just and like the treasure hoard. Um, or is there... so all of these trophies here, if you progress your hype with Shax, uh, you'll be able to spend them here at all these chests to get a really cool set of armor. I can pull open my character so you can see what that looks like on the hunter. That's right. Also too, so for the folks at home, uh, we, we went ahead and, and mentioned this as well online, but as a quick reminder, this is actually an armor set that is, that's inspired by year one of Destiny 2. Um, Tom, this is looks the nice. parade armor set, I believe is what we're referring yeah, to it as. So like, it's the, 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 the uh, yeah, D2 year one parade armor. That's right, yeah, yeah. You, you had it in Homecoming. It's kind of a classic set. We're again, like full circle here. With, yeah. We were like beginning the Destiny 2 saga there and now we're kind of yeah I, know, it is fight here we're getting ready to take it's mountain top has yeah. that's this, what i got spoiled on iconic set of armor we're calling the parade armor uh, 2.0 yeah and um it, it, everyone can earn it it's available to all players and, Good look uh, at shacks some other cosmetics we can show what a lad play with it too very nice and also too for uh, folks out there we obviously we have the hunter here actually kelsey can we check out the uh, the armor set one more time yeah for the folks at home uh, also, too, so this is uh, an up close and personal look, obviously, at this armor set, uh, which will be available to, to everyone that goes ahead and jumps into Into the Light. Um, also, too, there is a Titan set and a Warlock set, we should also say. Uh, that you can go ahead and see in the key art as well, but obviously this will be arriving on April 9th, so you'll get a chance to go ahead and go hands on. But um, yeah, it's looking fresh, honestly. I'm not too, I, I wouldn't be upset to go ahead and don that armor. Oh, yeah, boy. And it's really interesting, like setting all these. So we're working on all this stuff because we we're kind of waiting to finally see that that set and finally being able to equip it in game was just such a god of course there's a lot more around okay hold on i noticed something though remember how all the energy weapons were facing the wrong way well now it's facing the right way so i, I bet that wasn't intentional we're with the mid-season update we we're kind of waiting to finally see that that set and Finally being able to equip it in game was just such a cool experience. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> All right, so we're obviously equipped. We've got you can't wait for me to see the heavy here, slot. Like, down, but, is uh, it, we're now hanging is out it with Edge Transit? And I, is that our site over there as well? Yes, that is our site. Um, trying to think of what, what, what heavy oh, grenade launcher would be funny. Be hub it's got to be Edge Transit. That's the only thing I can think of. Weapons. So uh, th those, those uh, trophies that you'll be collecting with shacks, you can just keep redeeming them here, um, and you'll be able to get all your guns here. Um, and this one here is, uh, we're bringing back the Gift of the Thunder Gods. Uh, so if you need to catch up on your oh, power level. Oh, good, team, you're, like, ready good. To right in, I'm going to get Asher into this, dude, I think. I think I'm going to get Asher into this. I would rather convince him. So if you've got any friends Yo, bro, play Destiny. Also, too, actually, you double check. This I'll buy you the expansion. <laughs> we need okay, Raid, right. raid so Team. For your friends that want to go ahead and dive in right alongside you, even if they maybe haven't played you know, very much recently, they got a chance to go ahead and just catch right up they'll be ready be ready for day one that's yeah. right okay perfect <laughs> uh so let's go ahead and talk to shax actually as a starting point so how are we going to be working with shax obviously he's opened up his den of antiquities to us but uh kelsey can you tell us a little bit more about that yeah of course yeah so we need to pull out all the stops in defeating the witness so uh shax has opened up his brave arsenal for us and as you can see shax is really like the shining star of this area we've been i've been kind of panning by all these hollow shaxes that line the space which i'll be happy to talk about okay but oh, where's the tribute um, hall but yeah let's, let's where's our firing range talk to him and see what he's got um so oh my uh, god over the course of those are like the strange coins earn uh earn reputation with him you're gonna be able to progress and get all this this cool stuff mm -hmm. um okay first of all that's a lot of silver second of all how in the world do they have that many legendary shards when they're gonna get rid of them, <laughs> supposedly. One thing in particular I want to just kidding. And though dev build, dev build. This key. A a super black key. Is that is that what I'm seeing over there, Kelsey? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and I wonder where that goes. Super um, black. Maybe maybe people that are D1 vets potentially from back in the day might. Oh my God, D1 this, veteran. What's this? What's this symbiote we're looking back at? Like, <laughs> yeah. What is that? 
Yeah, right now it's Was that the heart or whatever? Bullets in containment. But if you keep playing into the light, you'll be able to get access to the keys you need to unlock this. Um, Ooh. Get access to the shader. So good. All right. So obviously, too. This yeah, is a shader. Uh, heads up to everyone. So one of the ultimate rewards available through this will indeed be the return of the super black shader. Uh, it's back. Yeah, it looks like the vault or There's whatever they, they call it on the, in the I tower. What they are. But I will say to the Destiny Fashion subreddit, uh, we are prepared for you to go ahead and take this on a whole. Dude, why did they so have actually, to mow their lawn right when I started this? Super black and give it a look really quickly. Yo, oh, super black shader. Chat, how do you? Finally. It does not get much better than that. That's fire. Finally. Excellent. All right. Yeah. So Shax is obviously going to be there to help us get rewards. In addition to the Brave Arsenal and the armor, Super Black is waiting for us. Uh, so tell us a little bit about our site as well, actually. He's, uh, he's, I'm not sure if many people in the chat know about him. He's usually lived in lore entries, but um, let's go ahead and get a look and see what we're going to be working with him on. <laughs> So, he looks pretty cool. Our site has a lot of quests for What? Us. And we did some, some pretty interesting things, in my opinion, with with uh, some of the quests you can pick up from our site. Hung jury. That looks like succession for some reason. Falling guillotine? Slammer? Is there another, is there another sword that looks like that? And probably edge transit. A couple things. They also have very... Reused fun. shaders, reused yeah. assets. Right of succession, um, edge lord. So, uh, Ayo. For every single weapon that we're gonna be talking about today, there's a corresponding quest. Spin to win. Um, once you've completed the quest for that weapon, you're going to be able to unlock falling guillotine. That weapon dropping as rewards. But there's two other really cool things uh, that we can talk about there. Um, one, we have these special limited edition uh, appearances for the Brave Arsenal. Yeah. Um, so limited if you edition. Quest, you're going to get a guaranteed curated uh, copy of these li limited edition weapons. Excellent. Um, which I'm happy to share. <clears throat> what do you mean by that? Um, and you'll unlock attunement, which is something I can talk about in a second. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's take a look at some of these. So here's a look the mountain uh, top. The folks at home, they may they may remember this one. I get a hunch that chat. So can this be random chat, rolled then? I know it's so exciting. The <laughs> mountain top has returned. Uh, so this is a quick look at the mountain top. Obviously, uh, Chris, we're going to dive in more with the whole uh, brave arsenal and little bit, impulse is, frenzy. Uh, touched on the limited edition edition versions of these, the ornaments that exist on there. Can you tell us a little bit about what the limited edition variants of these? Dude, that shader looks that sick. Over the course of Into the Light. Sure, yeah, so the Brave Arsenal weapons will drop from Onslaught, uh, and we're talking a little bit about attunement and whatnot here. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, low chance that one will drop as a limited edition variant, which comes pre-equipped with a super shiny ornament that's yeah. locked. They're adding shiny weapons. <laughs> Bro. They're adding shiny weapons to Destiny. No way. <laughs> But bro, what if you don't get the roll you want on the shiny version? To that weapon? Yeah. Uh, so the um, a transit here is uh, the. Uh, it's the, transit, uh, is, yes. Uh, these are kind of exotic levels of fancy. Yeah. So you can't apply shaders to the ornaments. You have to remove the ornament first. Got it. Um, the ornaments will only be available up until the final shape launches. Yeah. Uh, or the, the limited edition variants. Oh my sense. god, you have to get them before the final shape? Why do you gotta FOMO the shinies, Bungie? Base versions will continue to be available. Alright. So there's the ultimate I was there version with the limited yeah. edition on there, but other than that, after the final shape launches... Wait, did I just see... Get these weapons. Sorry, hold on, we gotta go back. On there, edition on there, but... Got it. Um, the... Shade reaction, eager edge? Hello? Ornaments... <laughs> will only be available up until the final shape launches. Yeah. Uh, or the, the limited edition variants. Makes sense. Yeah. So the base versions will continue to be available. All right. So there's the ultimate <laughs> I was there version with the limited edition on there. But other than that, after the final shape launches, people will still be able to get these weapons. Hammerhead. Yeah, Rampage like, killing tally. Uh, double perks in both. Holy shit. Power so creep the season. The gameplay differences. So if you've got a great uh, base weapon, you don't power need creep to, the you season. Cosmetic, cosmetic only. Fair enough. Makes sense. Absolutely. All right, we're going to be getting, able to test these out in a little bit. So, <clears throat> obviously, we're going to go through all of these here in just a bit. Chat, there's a taste of just a few. Uh, we're glad that you get a chance to go ahead and check it out. Um, but also, too, for the folks that want to go ahead and farm these rolls out. Kelsey, I believe you just mentioned attunement. Can you tell us a little bit more about that before we move on? Yes, I'd love to. So, uh, one cool thing that you can do when completing these these weapon quests once they're available. That's true. I don't think Hammerhead did, though. To a weapon. So, let's say that there's, there's a weapon you really want to drop. 
Uh, you can bend uh, luck in your favor and make it more likely David. for that weapon to appear. This um, stuff's so free. For example, if you're mad about this, now. then you actually have a problem. Let's do... Let's do... Let's do Recluse. Yeah. So Chat seems to be pretty hyped on Recluse. <laughs> so um, if you're looking around, you'll see there's all of these these shacks everywhere, which we just had an absolute blast. Do we see the perks uh, on Recluse? Uh, working with and coming up with. Um, and Does this love Master of Arms? Attunement. You can just freely do this at any time. You can you can change your attunement at any time. Um, you can choose which weapon has a higher chance of dropping. So I'm going to do that now. Oh, RNG manipulation. There we go. Got our thumbs up. We're Get good. Get the affirmation from Shaxx. Never hurts. <laughs> yeah, I can always use more affirmations. From it never hurts, honestly. <laughs> he shouts them very effectively, I might add. Yes. Um, so, so yeah. Um, at any point, um, you can just visit another one. I could even just go and, you know, unattune and, and reattune to my heart's content. Just once, once you've once you've unlocked it, you can do that at any time. Awesome. So yeah, pick 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 your favorites that you want to chase, and and uh, you'll have a much higher chance of getting them. Bungie right, W, the, uh, bro. Has a lot in store. There's even more, obviously, chat than is even here, but uh, we see what you're saying in chat. I feel the electricity in the air. I should also note one more thing. Uh, you should all go out and farm with impunity to go ahead and get the rolls you want, ultimately, because with the arrival of the final shape, we'll indeed be adding 100 more vault slots. So go out there, grab the rolls. Let's go! Chance to Google which one has the god roll. More vault space to waste! Just want to let you know that with the arrival of the final shape, you'll be getting 100 more fault slots. So go ahead and dive on in and grab whatever you want to go ahead and chase. I know you'll use this uh, <laughs> All right. My vault's about to get even more cluttered. Let's go. I think that's a solid tour of the Hall of Champions. Um, I think maybe at this point we go ahead and start dive on, diving on in with the Brave Arsenal. Tom, what are you thinking? Yeah, I'll hop in. I'll, let's uh, go clean out some lost sectors. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. We got some demos to run as well. All right, everyone. So this is as a quick look at the Hall of Champions as well. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and dive on in and look at the Did they change the way it works? Uh, now, Chris, obviously you were intrinsically involved with kind of setting this whole thing up, with building the Brave Arsenal, deciding what was out there. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how you guys landed on this iconic set of, of Destiny weapons for Into the Light? Yeah, and we all have our own favorite weapons internally uh, and wanted to make sure that we delivered on a ton of nostalgia for the whole uh, like Destiny 2 weapon set. Yeah. If you look on Reddit or Twitter, there are you know, hundreds of weapons that these could be. <laughs> yeah. We had to narrow it down to 12. It's like we couldn't reasonably fit any more into the activity. Yeah. Blast <laughs> furnace. What is that? What is that? Here we go. So it's, uh, yeah, a whole set of weapons from across uh, Destiny's history. A few recent ones. Uh, most of them are from from earlier in D2 yeah. history. So for those who have been terrorized by Blast Furnace and the Crucible, it's back now. Yeah. Ung jury succession. I wonder what that is. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, Tom, let's go ahead and just kind of walk through these. Let's go ahead and take us at a, a hung jury. I see next as well. Sure. I can just. Do you want me to? Oh, yeah. I'll just mouse over them here. Blast Furnace, hung jury. Hung jury returns as well. Session. Uh, that's weird. Oh, that's midnight coup. That's weird that they, uh, they're adding a raid weapon. That's very strange to me. I mean, I guess Midnight Coup is also a raid weapon, but I mean, it's from a sunset raid. Succession is from a raid that is currently in the game and you can literally craft it. It's a That's a little weird. Crypt, they can get a, their hands on a raid weapon as well. Yeah, I should just touch on Succession. And yeah, please. Four variants in there as well. But these are fairly recent weapons, but yeah. they are, by default, you have to own the release that those raids came out in. So you have to, oh. own the to get Succession, you have right. to own Witch Queen. So it's to give free-to-play players. Yeah. The, uh, okay. The versions of these weapons I'm okay with that. versions are available to all players. So you get a taste of what, like, the raw power of a raid weapon. Yeah. Which honestly, once you get succession in your hands, suddenly everything feels so alive. Like <laughs> it's just, it's like a ton of bricks. Uh, let's see. We also have there we go, midnight coup. Uh, for anyone who watched last week, thank you, Noah, as well for going ahead and showing this off. Uh, midnight, midnight coup. coup. Incredibly triumphant return. Uh, just look, actually, can you adjust it just so it shows the waves in the in the shader, Tom? There we go. <laughs> there we go. It's just that never gets old, honestly. Nice. Harkens back to one of my favorite times in the Black Armory. Wait, 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 what did the, right. so we have a, a what origin shade. trade do? So it shows the waves in the, in the shader, Tom. There we go. <laughs> there we go. It's just, it never gets old, honestly. Harkens back to one of my favorite times in the Black Armory. 
Final blows grant grenade energy when playing a light subclass or melee energy when playing a darkness subclass. Okay. Excellent. All right, so we have a, a full list here. So we've gone over uh, all of them in the primary slot. Um, let's go ahead and move on down to the uh, the green ammo selection as well. Obviously, recluse chat. You've all noticed that we're just as happy that it's back. Master of arms. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what else we got in store there. Luna's Howl! Actually, in particular with Luna's Howl, I know we were talking about this a little bit Magnificent earlier, Howl. But, you know, these weapons are not necessarily their, their previous estate just kind of held in stasis, but you guys have brought them forward with new perks. You've kind of done some redesigns as well. Um, with Luna Howls in particular, you were mentioning that uh, the Magnificent Howl perk has undergone a rework as well. Uh, yeah, in its original shipping form... Uh... Number of precision final blows before reloading affects the total rounds granted with increased range and damage. Precision final blows with Magnificent Howl active... Uh, extend the effect for additional rounds. That was okay. way too strong because it would let you uh, two tap a guardian in PvP incredibly fast with the perk up. Yeah. Uh, Got heal clip on it too. RPM. Heal so clip's well, actually low key really good. No. 140 RPM hand cannon, but it retains the precision frame, so it's super easy to control the recoil. Yeah. We've also redesigned the Magnificent Howl perk. <laughs> uh, so that now lets you build up stacks of super bullets. Um, a little bit reminiscent of, of Hawkmoon. Yeah. Uh, with precision final blows. Yeah. Uh, and then you can unleash those on Guardians to do massive damage. You can get a two tap, but it requires a little bit more effort. Yeah. And obviously, I'm very strong in PVE as well. Yeah. Got to bide your time and actually land those headshots. Yeah. I'm saying that mostly to myself in the mirror as I, <laughs> as I get upset for losing another round of trials, but. So we had uh, two hand cannons in this release Midnight yeah, that's true. and Lunas Howl. That's right. Yeah. Um, we assigned those to two different designers. Yeah. And there's a competition going on to see which one is more popular. Or is more effective. Oh, really? So, <laughs> everyone out there in chat right now should let us know which one of those two ends up being their favorite. Yep. We have an actual debt to settle internally here by the sounds of it. I'm going to use my like What do you think is going to win, Chris? Oh, the Lunas uh, Howl would fit Lunas, better in my uh, current my, PvP uh, build. From the Leviathan raid still in my vault. Oh, yeah. Actually, it'd fit right in because I use Igneous sure. in that slot right. usually. We'll see. Here. All right. Uh, also, LC's LC's rifle. Actually, here's a cool one as well. Yeah. Uh, this is no longer the stranger's rifle. This is Elsie's rifle now. Yeah, Elsie's oh. rifle. Oh. That's right, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a really iconic Destiny 1 weapon that... Desperado's Zen moment. Destiny 1 campaign would have acquired as yeah. a stranger's rifle. Uh, it's come forward with as close to its original feel as we could manage, uh, updated for the Destiny 2 sandbox. It's got a ton of uh, cool new traits. It's really very, very strong, uh, high-impact yeah. pulse rifle. Um, That's cool. The Rewind Rounds perk, uh, oh, which, yeah. which we made for Vault of Glass. Yeah. Uh, the D2 version, which harks back to the, um, the the original perks on the Stranger's Rifle in D1 as well. And this one already looks uh, filthy, if I might say, with Zen Moment and Desperado on there. Mm, like Desperado, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> did the room get colder, or what just happened, honestly? <laughs> uh, and also, too, so there's a new... Actually, as long as we're there, um, Tom, if you wouldn't mind actually opening that back up, there's a new Origins trait, Origin trait, pardon me, as well on these. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, yeah, the Indomitable... <laughs> I like how I already read that. Uh, final blows with a... Light subclass equipped grenade, uh, grant grenade energy, and with a dark subclass equipped grant melee energy. Excellent. Uh, so you get like that sort of duality, and they're, they're reasonably strong perks. Yeah, designed to keep you in the fight either way. Yep. Excellent. Depends on how much it gives you. Keep checking out. What else do we have in store here? No way. <laughs> no way they brought forbearance. That's crazy. So this is you were talking about, obviously, getting that taste of raid weapons. Yeah. Literally the best special weapon in the game. Bring forbearance forward also, too, into the light. Like, what did you add new perks into the pool, or what did you guys end up doing to kind Disruption of... Disruption break. Yeah, so we... I don't think the original had that. Like, uh, the Witch Queen version, mm -hmm. but with slightly updated perks. So the, the perk pools are fairly similar. Power creep forbearance with forbearance. Disruption break left column on a... Away from grenade launcher, super super strong. Yeah, it's not something that you get on the original version. Be disgusting. Yeah. That's actually so the broken. Yeah, it's got the, the new, um, that's a really strong combo. Ability origin trait instead of the soul drinker trait, and that's the same is true of any other weapons which had already shipped with origin traits. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, it looks so good with that that ornament on there. And of course, I think that was that a, a limited edition ornament on the recluse as well. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, base and look the, at the oh, let's take a look. Engine. Yeah. Again, the ultimate I was there. As you go ahead and begin your showdown with the witness. Oh, that's literally the OG thing. roll. It doesn't hurt to have one of these sitting on your hip. Obviously, yeah. that's the OG the roll right there. Into the room. Yeah, and this one is the uh, the curated version. So the do the limited editions always drop with the curated roll? 
I'm assuming that's how that works. The natural drops of wait, 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 hold up. Kills with this. Okay, I think it's still the same Master of Arms. Excellent. And of course, our beloved Edge Transit. Yeah, Couldn't keep we were, it away if we wanted to. When we were looking at the <laughs> it's uh, transit. Our favorite weapons, like we wanted to bring forward some of the strongest weapons from Forsaken. Yeah. Has, the like, strongest like, weapons. Blasting away raid bosses with that transit. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. There's a <laughs> matter associated with this weapon. Yeah. We actually brought it forward as one of the strongest uh, heavy ammo grenade launches. Yeah. I was gonna say, no you're way. Earlier, you're saying this one just hits like an absolute ton of bricks now. Oh yeah. You can see some of the perks there. It's uh, it's pretty wild. I mean, honestly, yeah, this is... Yeah, really heavy GLs really are actually pretty good, though. I would obviously find a home in my loadout. My Void one, specifically, but I'm also picky about that kind of thing. Oh, but it has bait and switch. Uh, all right, what else do we have here in this bottom row? The one and only, the Falling, falling Guillotine. Falling Guillotine. Now, actually, one thing that, that you mentioned uh, as we were kind of talking about this earlier as well that was kind of cool is this is also going to be the probably the first uh, sword outside of those available in Crota's End, I believe, mm. um, that has sword logic on it as well. Uh, yeah, that's right. Roll with sword logic. Seems like oh, a sword logic. To uh, put that perk on something that isn't from that raid. And yeah. A little bit earlier than we would normally put uh, raid perks onto a new weapon. Yeah. I'm also going to echo like chat that. here for a second. Is that Eager Edge I see on there? That is an Eager Edge. Yeah. Okay. It'll only be the. <laughs> they know how much we love that. Of, um, 30th anniversary. Yeah. Ha have access to that. It would basically just be the slammer. That's a lie. Yeah. From, yeah, yeah, that's you just released the slammer. Yeah. And this one has like the classic void perk. Uh, combo of a repulsive brace, yeah. destabilizing rounds, it's all fun, and a lot, lot of other strong It just doesn't get old, honestly, yeah. Yep. And then, of course, we're also joined by... Dude, the I love that rampage yeah. killing yeah. tally, that's yeah. insane. As long as, as long as you're dipping your toe into the world of the Black Armory, this is obviously one that has to come forward. Everyone's favorite legendary machine gun. Yeah, seriously. It's, you can't go past it. Yep, it it, I, I think that's undisputed. Is, is undisputed. In my dream journals, Hammerhead is the one. GOAT. Uh, this is looking fantastic. All right, so we have a whole cast of characters. Now, Tom, you've got some uh, some loadouts set up. You've got some Lost Sectors that you're going to go ahead and start diving in on. Um, I vote you go in there and start Dude, those stats hurt me. <laughs> We're already there. Okay. Those <laughs> stats <laughs> hurt me. Classic Mountaintop Recluse combo here. Yeah. And there's some new stuff with uh, Mountaintop, too, where you can rocket jump. No <laughs> way. So I was actually, I'm so glad we got to that point this early because uh, one of the things that was really cool about sort of seeing this development. Rocket jumping. Was, you know, obviously one of the core tenets was to make sure that you're retaining that classic feel of these weapons and kind of what yeah. made them so great to begin with. But you've kind of done some redesigns and expanded even just on the on the loot pool, or pardon me, on the perk pool, rather. Um, how did you guys kind of go about the process of sort of rebuilding these weapons for this modern era of Destiny? Yeah, I mean, we held off on bringing Mountaintop uh, into the sort of modern destiny because it was just way too strong in both PvP and in PvE. Yeah. Uh, in PvP, it was like a, a pretty unpleasant meta when Mountaintop was part of everyone's <laughs> loadout, so we, we definitely- I can't with Master Arms and Recluse one, and Mountaintop are uh, back. Even with the direct hit in PvP anymore. Fair. So we've reduced I that a little bit. Uh, but we also um, saw how excited people were for the Danger Zone rocket launcher perk, uh, yeah. launching you into the air. So we've made that part of the base behavior of the new um, micro missile frame grenade launcher intrinsic yeah. so they do super um low self damage and give yourself a massive physics impulse yeah um, the uh the, the team fortress 2 soldier mains are just suddenly dusting off their rocket launchers in real moment. time right now obviously uh, so obviously too is you know going ahead and adding just not only to the the perk pool but kind of the intrinsic feel of these weapons. Uh, were there any others in particular when you guys were working on them where you're like, yes, this is this is how this change needs to go? Like obviously yeah. magnificent how got to change, but is there anything else in that pool that feels like it was really kind of a cool leap forward for these weapons? Uh, I think blast furnace is a good example. Nino's gone. The yeah. black armory version rolled with scopes, uh, which like everyone would just. Pick the best scope. Like internally, we felt like the Rasmussen ISA yeah. scope was uh, like by far the best. Really, really clean. Yeah. Um, and with the changes to uh, damage fall off on weapons, zoom doesn't matter that much anymore anyway. Yeah. So it comes pre-equipped with that scope geometry, but it can roll barrels instead. So you get all the benefits of stats. Oh, awesome. Stats are already pretty juiced. Yeah. Uh, but you have that that classic scope geo. Actually, also, too, to channel chat one more time, mm. uh, as a quick heads up as well, these weapons, while they won't be craftable, they are going to be enhanceable. Is that correct? Correct, yeah. So, Sweet. Uh, these weapons will retroactively be enhanceable when the final shape comes out. So any drops that you get uh, during this initial period, you'll be able to enhance them. Excellent. Okay. So you want to make sure to really hold on to those god rolls that Light.gg went ahead and told you about. Yeah. I like how they right, actually so called out light.gg. That's funny. Furnace, you were... Yeah, you were just talking about Blast Furnace, so I, th I thought I'd hop over to it. It's thematic, yeah. 
nice and smooth like it always was. <laughs> Uh, Kelsey, actually, too, on, on your side, you know, obviously having this new tapestry of rewards to work with has been pretty exciting. As you kind of went ahead and sort of hatched your plans of how players would go about getting these, kind of what role did, did these weapons play, I guess, in the overall reward structure? Yeah, of course. Uh, so we wanted the rewards of this release to be all about the weapons. And yeah. The shining stars, they're, they're awesome. Um, so uh, I saw people were asking a little bit about what we're going to be getting from Onslaught. Yeah. Here, on, on, on a side note, my opinion on crafted weapons is I really like them, but like you said, I don't think they need to be on everything. Um, I think they, I think it's good that they are on seasonal weapons because that stuff goes away, so you can't grind that shit again. But if you have the craftable, you can, of course, you know, change the perks or whatever you want over time. I think it's important that they're craftable during the seasons. Um, raid weapons, I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's a... I think it's a good thing for those of us that don't raid a lot, but I also think that it discourages people from raiding once you have all of the recipes. So I don't know. That one's kind of hard. Because like th that's like the something about dungeons, is that people will run dungeons over and over again because they're not craftable. But like, I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of chests in there, um, and every single chest has a weapon in it. Um, and all of those chests can, uh, can, can react to attunement. So if you attune a weapon, anytime you see a chest, it's gonna happen. So uh, every, every, every set, not every wave, that'd be crazy. Every, every <laughs> set, uh, there's a chest with a weapon in it. If you do it at higher difficulty, there yeah. are two chests. They both have weapons in them. And if you keep the ADU alive throughout the entirety of Onslaught, there's another bonus chest available. Um, so you can get a lot. If you, if you just keep yourself kicking and, yeah. and get all the way through there, keep the ADU up, uh, there's a lot of guns to be had. So those folks who are going to dive into the Legend 50 wave version of Onslaught are going to be... And see, they're actually coming up with a middle ground where we're able to enhance these randomly rolled weapons, which is good. Because then that means they're not automatically power creeped by the craftable versions. Um, which is really nice because there's ways to get the random rolled weapons with multiple perks in each column. So you could technically get a randomly rolled weapon with multiple perks and enhance those perks therefore it's already better than the crafted weapon if you got a god god roll on it which i think is really cool well rewarded for those efforts <laughs> that's i i'm asking partially for myself obviously as well and my fire team at home who might be listening <laughs> uh to, weapons no. team is really excited about it Jimmy, because it like yeah it uh gives players some control over the drops that they get mm -hmm. but it retains the excitement of those drops like you will get your like blast furnace dropping from the chest you don't have to go and focus it or anything like that yeah which yeah we love that nice actually also too is you know you guys are also players of the game chris oh, yeah. were there any roles or weapons in particular where it was just your personal favorite that you had a lot of fun with in a play test or probably of these weapons my favorite is blast furnace yeah uh, with that that classic scope and uh the role that I've got on oh, mine, so your fat pulse rifles suck in PvE. Yeah. Uh, Headseeker kill clip, which oh, is like buff really nasty in PvP. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm That's going to. I'll put another few hundred hours uh, in Chris. <laughs> I'll be right there with you, honestly. The moment I can put Dead Man's Tail down again, then that <laughs> will be the one that'll pick up immediately after. <clears throat> uh, Kelsey, also too, is you know I know we were talking a little bit earlier. You've been deep into the onslaught playtests as well, so that means in addition to the Brave Arsenal, you've got everything else at your beck and call. What are some <laughs> cool builds you've been working on, honestly, to go ahead and really emphasize these new weapons? Yeah, um, I've been I've been really enjoying uh, Solar Solar Warlock. I found is really really fun. <laughs> solar Warlock you moment. Find a lane and just completely nuke it if you get your like unlimited grenades going. You can just <laughs> completely destroy. So I've been really partial to uh, Luna's Howl. Uh, I, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I tend to get a little, uh, a little feral, a little too excited. So sometimes <laughs> having like heal clip on it or something can, uh, can give me that that extra staying power I need to keep that ADU up. <laughs> it's like it's part of you got to be in the fight as much as you possibly can, and I say that <clears throat> partially as a void hunter who crutches on invisibility and runs away <laughs> right away. So I understand and respect the hustle that I don't end up having. <laughs> uh, also, too, we got <clears throat> a question from chat uh, from Lil. Camino, I think is how you pronounce the Lost name. Lost Sector like, Discovered. Like, if you get it correct. Um, but just to reiterate, uh, will these weapons be attainable after the final shape arrives? Uh, yes, the base weapons will be, mm -hmm. uh, but the limited edition variants with those uh, sweet ornaments will not. Excellent. All right. So again, make sure you go ahead and dive on in once. I'm going to uh, grind out every single here, one, bro. Sure that, that I was there card, more or less. At least again, speaking for myself.
Uh, so also too is, I heard you guys mention briefly curated roles as well, because kind of like a part of the, the quest uh, process, was it with Shaxx or our site rather? Uh, with our site, yeah. Thank you, that's right. So is this one that you guys have set up where it's like, this is this is the go-to role. This is our, from our opinion, like one of our favorites or um, what was the process of kind of building those curated roles? Uh, yeah, we try to deliver something which is like an extremely good role, mm -hmm. not necessarily the single perfect role, because we want you to have a reason to go in and get excited for those drops. Yeah. Um, but like we would say, they're a you know, 70, 80 percent god roll. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, On the way, certainly. Yeah. And also too, is remember everyone, we we're getting a hundred more vault slots once the final shape comes out. So go ahead and just farm away. Now's the time. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Kelsey, were you going to say something more? Yeah. We also just w wanted to make sure people weren't completely at the mercy of RNG when it comes to getting these limited edition variants. Mm -hmm. So if you log in, you do those quests at our site, um, you can get one guaranteed copy of a limited edition of each weapon with, a, with that curated tool. Yeah. Nice. See, so we're getting, again, I, I think, obviously, Tom is here in the heat of battle, so to speak, but um, the uh, the origin trait, we just got another question about, actually. Mm. So for the folks at home, it is, it's indomitability, or? Yes. Thank you, all right. And that one, uh, can you, again, walk through that, that origin trait for us one more time? Uh, yeah, so on, on Final Blows, it grants you uh, grenade energy if you're running a light subclass. Oh, here we go, we got it on screen. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, which would be Arc Void or Solo, mm -hmm. uh, or Melee Energy if you're running a Darkness subclass, which would be Smart. Stasis or Strand. Got it, okay. So I can go in there as a Stasis Man and just throw all the shurikens I possibly have. Yeah, there's a more technical thing for that. I'm sorry, I got it wrong <laughs> out of the gate. Uh, all right, let's see here. Um, and also too, actually, uh, you know, we talked kind of at the beginning about what it was like to sort of pare down this list mm. of, of weapons down to 12. Can you tell us a little bit about that process? I can't imagine it was anywhere near as simple. <laughs> 12 was a really small number when you're looking at that, uh, that set of weapons. And yeah. if we'd gone by uh, lists on the internet or even internally, yeah. it could easily have ended up being half hand cannons. We had to restrict <laughs> ourselves to two. Fair. There were a lot that could easily have made the cut that we yeah. just, just couldn't. We just couldn't fit them in. That's fair. I mean, honestly, though, yeah. between Midnight Coup and Lunas Howell, like, a very, very solid cast to go ahead and come out of the gate here with. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're really strong. And they, yeah, uh, we definitely wanted to get that that spread of experience across the, the first few years of Destiny. He wanted to get that spread. Yeah, also, too, is even, you know, recalling all the way back to the Black Armory, you know, that's, I think, <laughs> a, a set of weapons that so many of us think back to so fondly. Um, you know, again, I think one of the goals here was to go ahead and retain that original feel. Um, you know, you guys went ahead and added in a bunch of new perks. Can you tell us what that process was? like in terms of making sure those perks matched up with that feel of the weapon? Yeah, I and mean, in cases where we have multiple weapons in the same archetype shipping, so we've got two pulse rifles, two hand cannons, uh, we assigned those to different designers and like made sure that the, uh, the roles that they occupy in the sandbox were sufficiently different. Um, we also would look at the most popular roles that the weapons had originally and make sure that those still appear uh, by the weapons. It meant having to redesign some perks, which would be too strong in today's sandbox, Yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, and then introducing, like when you, when you go and you look at uh, a blast. Radius in your <laughs> Casual game, using and, using special yeah, ammo, special sniper ammo on red bars. Up, right? like, yeah. And made sure we put a few of those in there as well. Yeah, and there's also uh, I'm not sure if we've seen it on screen yet, but there's a new perk that'll be joining this pool as well, won't there? Uh, yeah, there is. There's uh, in this build, it's called Blast Stand. Uh, the shipping name is different. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's a pretty sweet perk. If we could bring up the um, description of that when Tom is out of danger. <laughs> Which weapon is that? Uh, there was one, it was on Blast Furnace, I think. Yeah. Let me yeah. Oh, there we go. All right, well, we'll, let, we'll let him defend himself <laughs> yes. briefly. Yes. Uh, but we do have a, a couple questions from chat yeah, last as well. Down. What's it do? Um, uh, so there's one that asks, uh, Flo's Knuckles, I believe. There we go. Can we grind Onslaught multiple times for multiple drops? I'm assuming this is just go ahead and Oh, and it's like Golden Tricorn almost. Yes, you'll be getting, you'll get, getting weapons every run. You'll also be getting uh, currency from shacks mm -hmm. that you can, you can bring back and you can uh, throw in that chest that I showed you so you can just keep opening that chest. Uh, so just, yeah, just keep going. Dive on it, honestly. Yeah, go ahead and chase that roll, whatever you want. <laughs> Uh, also, too, one more quick question from chat. Uh, Mega12358, pardon me, Mega, uh, asks, can you take the limited edition ornament off and put it on another copy of the weapon, or is it just on that one weapon? So you can remove it. You can't put it on something else. It's cool. locked to the weapon that it dropped on. Makes sense, yeah. Okay. I mean, honestly, when it looks that good, you just got to go ahead and stick with what you got, you know? <laughs> yeah, if players have a favorite shader that they want to put on a weapon, they can remove it and put the shader on. Yeah, that's true. You can't shade the ornament. You can go ahead and photo finish it up to your heart's yeah, content, yeah. obviously, that opportunity. Or super black, obviously, when the time arrives. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. So, Tom, what are you running right now? 
I've just been hopping around with all the weapons here. Now I've got Blast Furnace and Elsie's rifle on. I know double primary isn't always meta, but <laughs> we're gonna make it meta for the sake of everything. Double primary. Pretty solid weapons. <laughs> for the purposes of illustration. Now here's that new perk that you both were talking about, Last Stand on Again, reminder, this Blast name will Furnace. be changing in, in the live version. Yep. Yeah, so weapon final grows, blows grant bonus damage. Uh, melee and grenade final blows grant a larger damage bonus that can stack. So once you get this perk really rolling, it's very strong. Yeah. To sustain it. Wonder how much. So you go ahead and clear out a bunch of red bars and then take down that yellow bar with ease if yep. you go ahead and do everything correctly. Yeah, it ties nicely into the origin trait as well because the origin trait yeah. grants you energy for your abilities and then you get uh, bonus damage for getting ability final blows. Yeah, it really creates, <clears throat> creates that loop, honestly. You just become yeah. the self-fulfilling prophecy of death at that point, mm -hmm. which as a guardian is never a bad place to find <laughs> yourself, frankly. Uh, let's see here. Actually, also too is, you know, I know we touched obviously on Chris's personal favorite being Blast Virtus. Kelsey, was there anything uh, when you saw this land back on the list of the Brave Arsenal where you were like, finally, that one's back? I was, I was, I was real excited about Luna's Howl. Luna's Howl. <laughs> I mean, that's just <laughs> smart, honestly. That just makes sense. Tom, how about you? Is there anything in particular that, that you know, obviously having We're almost died of, of the trim mines. helping design and sort of define all this stuff? Um, you know, what are your your favorite weapons and roles that have come out of this? I'm I'm pretty pretty basic, pretty easy. I, I really am excited about recluse uh, and, and and mountaintop. Yeah, like I I just love that combo of being able to like get in close with a, an SMG and get, get the damage perk going and feeling really powerful, then being able to switch to the grenade launcher and fire off some like little mini rockets and be able to play around with getting Ooh, a little more airborne <laughs> is, is, is just like, it's just fun. I can already imagine some strand hunter doing that above me and then immediately uh, diving on top of me in the and, and I look forward to like, you know, True. accidentally not accidentally blowing myself up, but it's a lot harder to do now. Like I, I remember with mountaintop back in the day, I, I would like, I would just like shoot my feet on purpose <laughs> and like it was usually like an instant that was gonna so you die. Really, uh, you get a lot more up close and personal with it. Yeah, let's see. Fit nicely into a lot of builds. Honestly, I can already see a Tommy's matchbook build with that. <laughs> just floating up there in the sky as a warlock, just murdering everyone. But that is to say, now there's an opportunity for more than just warlocks to be the floating weapon platforms out there in the game. Yeah. I know, come yes. on, sorry. <laughs> we, we can share. Yes. We can share the abilities. Uh, Particularly uh, with the redesign of uh, Manticore, there's a a fun strategy. I don't know how super effective it is, but yeah. like mountaintop to launch yourself way up into the air yeah. and switch over to <laughs> Manticore. Yeah. And you can just hover around. Just seems like a, a fever dream I had one time, honestly. <laughs> uh, also, too, for the folks at home that may not have seen the Manticore uh, kind of redesign, can you tell us a little bit too about how the the intrinsic perk on that works now? Uh, yeah. So it's the base functionality, the way you use the weapon, is fairly similar. We've uh, tightened up. Uh, it's activation, so it will no longer activate if you're running downstairs and that kind of thing. That'd be so broken, Damon. Uh, you can also just deactivate it by holding reload, and it will do that quick special reload animation. Oh, very nice. Before you have to wait for it to expire or um, like switch off the weapon. Yeah. Uh, and then the uh, catalyst, instead of just giving you uh, damage resistance, now gives you a void overshield, uh, which oh, nice. of course also gives you damage resistance, but yeah. can tie into void builds uh, in a, a pretty synergistic way. Very nice, honestly. Yeah, between that. Devour the whole nine. Obviously, this could be a lot of uh, oh, yeah. mobile weapons. Survivability as well. It also uh, decreases enemy accuracy against you, similar to the always on time sparrow. So yeah. you've got a ton more um, like damage resistance, you've got an overshield, and enemies are missing you all the time. So it's uh, combined with being able to. I really to gotta try Manticore again. Yeah. Maybe I'll try Void Titan That's for the first actually, time uh, since they uh, nerfed barricades. What's the difference between uh, the new perk um, mm -hmm. and uh, Golden Tricorn? They sound pretty similar. Uh, they do have kind of similar functionality. The big one is that the Golden Tricorn bonus is large, but uh, doesn't stack hmm. once you get it. So um, the uptime on uh, the new perk, whose name I can't remember. Yep. It's, not, it's not in this book, <laughs> um, is that the, up, the uptime is higher. Excellent, uh, okay. Makes sense. Uh, also, too, it's, uh, we got another chat as well. Uh, Chat question for me, I should say. Uh, will the weapon ornaments for Luna's Howl and the Recluse be equipable for the new versions of those weapons? Ah, uh, yes, they will. Oh, awesome. Both for the uh, the base versions and for the variants, you can equip any ornaments that you've got. Um, players have already noticed that uh, some of those show, are showing up later in the season yeah. uh, in the Bright Dust Storm. So. For anyone out there that might uh, go ahead and check through the databases, they might have noticed something potentially. Yep. Yeah, we can't say yes or no, but maybe. Firm maybe, certainly. <laughs> 
Uh, excellent. All right, so we're doing a pretty good job here. Tom, I got to say, uh, it seems like you're making this a pretty good, quick work of these lost sectors. Yeah, I mean, it's like he's played them before. Maybe once or twice, potentially. Oh my god, bro, he's going to bulge them up, up again. A while, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom, actually, also, too, is, you know, as, as you've kind of been helping sort of build a lot of, of what Into the Light is going to be, um, you know, what was the role that these weapons played? Like, why is why is Shax choosing now to go ahead and re-equip us with this particular set of antiquities? And part of the idea is that it's like this forbidden arsenal, right? The things that aren't, uh, that, that we've kind of set aside, at least in the Crucible and other spaces, and and now in this, this kind of dire time with, with our backs against the wall, we need to, you know, kind of set aside uh, the, True. Those, uh, conventions and, and you know, really uh, take every advantage we can in the fight against the witness and, and kind of like, you know, having players in this moment, you know, with Into the Light, you know, it's, it's, it's a great time to hop in and play if you haven't been playing or uh, if, if you want to catch up, and we're going to give you the weapons you need to be ready for the final shape. Like, as long as you show up every week, you, you do the work, uh, you're going to get, like, an incredible arsenal. Yeah, particularly also, if you had been, like, looking at some of the uh, meta heavy grenade launchers, yeah. you can just walk in and get extra in transit and, like, be, like, competitive already. Yeah. And also, too, uh, I just got word from back at home that uh, also Noah is apparently back at home after last week's stream in chat cheering everyone on. So if everyone out there wants to give him a quick, yeah, great in chat, now's the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> One of the moments of all time. I really like auto-loading hoster on the mountaintop. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it I've got, strong. yeah, I've got a, a fighting lion part in our dust loadout that obviously hinges pretty heavily on auto-loading holster because I never want to stop shooting any grenades. <laughs> I'm one of those. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> We're getting some love for Noah in the chat. All right, love to see it. Uh, so also, too, actually, you know, over the course of, of developing kind of this new reward structure, was there anything about it where you're like, all right, this is, this is the moment. Like, Onslaught is set up just right. Like, what was it like kind of building this structure for players to go ahead and just reinvest in, I guess? Yeah. I think when we finally got the loot explosion going, yeah. there was this whole conversation and how we want it to feel when you open the chest and all this stuff and, and all these people working together doing tech stuff to make sure it all it all worked great and everyone doing their part and then you know finally getting in there and just just running through and seeing everything just yeah <laughs> like I guess all of your work just like flying through the air <laughs> space was just really satisfying and it really felt really felt like it was coming together bro they don't have any armor mods or anything um more icons and world art coming in the space really started to feel tangible when Shax finally had the guns in his hands in the yeah in the, <laughs> and all the hollow shaxes for a while they're just like that's like right. this you know did you guys have that vision of the hollow shaxes like right away you were like this is how we want it to be or was it just <laughs> what was the evolution of that space like when you guys were building it we got to, oh, it was really fun working with world art and all this stuff um it, 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 we had a bunch of people in the room, everyone who's dedicated to the space in some capacity, and we were just brainstorming together and, and, and laughing and coming up with all these, these fun ideas. So it was a huge collaborative process, and I think that's what's so magical about working in games, is you get to work with all these people who know all these things that you don't and make something so cool and awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, also, too, we got one more quick question from chat that caught my eye. Uh, is the Master of Arms... I think it's the Galahorn one, or? which you could purchase. Uh, no, it's had to be toned down a little bit. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, it's still very strong. Um, but yeah, that, that original version is pretty wild. Kind of in a league of its own, certainly. Yeah. Uh, all right, Tom. So what's your, uh, your, what's your, what's your strat right now? Is it basically just Old West Gunslinger? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I haven't been having a chance Double to play with all these guns either. <laughs> so I'm just having fun <laughs> over here. Like you guys can, you can do your stream over there. I'm just gonna play. <laughs> uh, with, uh, with Midnight Coup here, which is, oh, it just feels so snappy and crispy. <laughs> like, it just got to point it in the right direction. It this does a lot of the work. Uh, explosive rounds and kinetic tremors, is that what it has? Or? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Like, you can just, I, you don't even really need to be that accurate, I guess, with this with this <laughs> roll. I can just kind of shoot around enemies. And Make them dance, like in the Old West. <laughs> Pretty yeah. sure this is still the highest aim assist of any legendary handgun in the game, too. Oh, is that so? Yeah. That's, what are some roles, by the way? So obviously, I think you know they, they each kind of have their different PvP and PvE flavors. But in in the PvE trenches, are there any roles in particular with this new kind of set of perks that you were really caught off guard by or surprised by? 
Uh, I mean, Firefly Kinetic Tremors is really, really strong. I think that was actually the role that... Firefly Kinetic Tremors. Yeah. Last week. yeah, he was making it look pretty good, thankfully. Yeah, yep, that's so what's that on the midnight right. too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what else? I think... Uh, or Fire... Yeah. The role that we've got here on Edge Transit, uh, which is... Cascade point left column. Yeah. Uh, being able to just like mag dump yeah. uh, a whole drum grenade launcher is really strong. Yeah. The uh, burst damage potential is wild. Uh, and also, too, actually, uh, another question from chat. To get the double perk rolls on the weapons, mm -hmm. do you have to do higher level onslaughts, or is there a chance for them to drop with double perks in each column regardless? Uh, there is always a chance. Um, those are the, the limited edition variants. Yeah. yeah. And also, too, just a, a quick reminder is the, the quests from Sha or on, on, from our site, rather. Those ones have a higher chance of giving you uh, one of the limited edition variants, or? Those give you the curated ones, right? The yes, curated? those that's are the right. curated yeah. ones. So pretty much, that's just a, that's a guarantee that you can get them. But any time you get a brave weapon, there's a chance that it will it will have the double perks and the the, the awesome appearance on it. So Very cool. that was actually a really oh, fun okay. thing. When, once we kind of got that implemented, playing through the first time, you just naturally got one. Yeah. Like, you'll be in a play test time. Oh, I, I got one. I got yeah. a limited edition one. It's just a really fun it's kind of even just that excitement of like when you're you know out there doing a dungeon farm or whatever the case is and you're checking through all the guns that are sitting in your mailbox and you're just like oh that initial set of rolls is pretty cool and then you click in and you're like wait i can curate this to exactly what i want it to be like that moment's always pretty rewarding honestly uh so obviously yes so uh as a quick reminder to everyone in chat so the um the brave arsenal will be able to drop from onslaught at every stage was it every 10 levels yes every set excellent okay set thank you very much mm -hmm. all right See, this is we have the experts here, obviously. <laughs> uh, all right, Tom, what's where's next on the list? Which which lost sector is going to wilt against your powers? I think I'm gonna go and I don't know what it's called, but it's on top of the little rocks here. I think, right? Is that that's that's where it's at? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think so you just go ahead and drop on down in. Well, there it is. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Those fallen aren't going to be safe <laughs> for long. Yeah. Can't die from full damage anymore. <laughs> it's true, that would, who could possibly do that? That's what we have the mountaintop to do, or to, to use for, rather, to get those kills on ourselves. <laughs> oh, wrong way. Bro went into <laughs> a useless cave! Uh, and actually, also, too, so, a lot of questions in chat about the uh, the, the pools of perks that are going to be, be available, the weapons that are going to be available. Uh, you and your team over on the weapons team have also gone ahead and authored a blog that will be hitting Bungie.net tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that's going to list out all of the weapons and uh, all of the perks that can appear on them. So, yeah. uh, no mystery about the, the perk list. Dang, no mystery. Yeah. So there will be uh, plenty of opportunities for all the build crafters out there to go ahead and go nuts and kind of imagine their most exciting opportunities, really. <laughs> Uh, actually, so also too, you know, we've talked a lot about the Brave Arsenal. Let's go ahead and touch on um, the the parade set again. Um, what was kind of the inspiration behind that set and kind of bringing it forward now? This is kind of like a first full, full circle moment, rather that I know Tom was mentioning. But you know, why is Shax choosing now to equip us with this armor set? Uh, I frankly wasn't as as involved in those kind of conversations. No, it's okay. We actually, it was actually really really uh, here we go. Fun. Uh, oh, nice. that's beautiful. Um, <laughs> yeah. Kind of waiting to see like how how we're going to end up looking in the end, because we weren't yeah. really sure right away which armor set we were getting, and we Here were just we go. so Ooh. excited to Good. see him in the... See him in the chest. Yeah. Yeah. It was. I think honestly, that first look at them in the uh, in the key art. You know, obviously there was an initial glimpse. Yeah. And it's weird because even as good as they looked, they were almost like everyone was just immediately captivated. By Sits in the grass. Immediately captivated by like, is that is that blast furnace in that warlock's hands? Who knows? If you're trying to bring back players' favorites, like there was so much nostalgia for that uh, parade armor set. Yeah. Like, bring that back and updating it a little bit. Like yeah. I still run the. Um, the parade armor set uh, on, on my character from yeah. time to time. Well. Gotta have that classic look, obviously. Yeah. And obviously getting a chance to go ahead and chase down Super Black doesn't hurt either. Mm -hmm. Looks very cool when you break it out of containment. <laughs> Won't say much. Excellent, alrighty. Uh, so let's go ahead and take one more quick run through. So this, uh, is there anything else actually? So I know we've had a chance to walk through the Brave Arsenal. Uh, Tom, in particular on your side, um, you know, we've gone ahead and kind of gone around the horn over here. Uh, is there anything about this, this kind of new set of weapons and sort of the role they play and into the light that, that's got you excited about kind of the overall sandbox now that we're going to have available to us? I'm really excited about the, 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 the a lot of these weapons are, 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 they're not god rolls, but they're pretty close to it. Like if you show up uh, every week and you do the weekly quest, you're going to get something that is really pretty powerful. Yeah. Um, and 
it's it's going to be like, for example, just looking at like the hammerhead here. It's got rampage and killing tally on it. That, that's just incredible. Never stops like for PVE, yeah, it just never stops firing, right? Yeah. Like, and then you're also increasing damage every time you take an enemy out, which is cool. And I could I could look at each one of these weapons too, and they they like. Um, I think we might have glossed over it earlier, but the edge transit with cascade point, like you get a kill and then you can dump the whole mag in like two or three seconds, which is, is really <laughs> powerful. And I think people are gonna find a lot of great synergies between these weapons. Like I was even, yeah, like Mountaintop, uh, Recluse and Cascade, uh, Edge Transit felt great. Like I could like use the SMG, uh, like that, I, that, that while my, my Mountaintop is reloading and then, and then like getting kills with those activates Cascade Point and I could swap over and dump the mag for Edge Transit. And like I could see similar things with Hammerhead uh, and Forbearance or um, with uh, Elsie's rifle. Yeah. Um, and then like, there's also just some some classic weapons here that I really miss. That I'm I'm really excited for Blast Furnace to be back, and I'm excited to see what it does to the meta with these being like relevant in the power game again, and being something that is accessible to to, to, to players new and old. Yeah, someone who spends a lot of time in the Crucible. Uh, I'm terrified already. <laughs> Proctor, thank you very much for all the hard work on that. <laughs> see you and yours, obviously. Uh, all right, so I think we're probably getting to a point now. We've gone ahead and. Checked out the, uh, the the rewards. We checked out the new social space. We checked out the brand. Tired all of a sudden. Um, it's probably about time for us to go ahead and start wrapping things up here. Uh, Mr. Tom Farnsworth, when you get an opportunity, feel free to go ahead and rejoin us. Relinquish your hold from the throne world, obviously. Uh, that was, this is so fast. Your jump ship yeah, right, was right with right, orbit, wasn't it? Right here. Uh, I, I hear it's <laughs> right. this time of year out there in the throne world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 everyone's, at Noah and uh, Kelsey have been keeping it warm for me in there. That's true. All right, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, and again, we can use some sword logic later to expand it when the time comes. Yeah. But for right now, we've gone ahead and done our job. Uh, well, for starters, uh, thank you all so much for taking the time to join us to talk us through, obviously, the, the, champ the Hall of Champions, talk us through the Brave Arsenal, through everything with Into the Light. Uh, it's been a great show. So thank you guys for starters for taking the time to join us today. Thank you so much. Yeah, my so pleasure. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Absolutely, and also to, uh, as a quick reminder, again, to everyone, uh, we'll be back next week, the same bungee time, same bungee place, to, to have another live stream about everything. Try to remember. Stuff coming with Destiny 2 Into the Light, uh, including some exotic mission, uh, some, pardon me, some exotic mission content and the craftable weapons that'll be available to them. Chat, I saw you mentioning some stuff about that. Exotic mission and craftable weapons. <laughs> potentially so come back next week uh, also we'll be going to, going to go ahead and walk through the pvp map pack as well so if you want to see everything that's going to be coming in those three maps next week will be your time sweet and, uh, there might be a few more additional surprises that we'll have in store for you never know but and also to the final thing we're going to go ahead and make sure you close with is as a quick reminder of course with the arrival of the final shape you'll be able to get 100 more slots in your vault uh, as you can go ahead and see here on camera we put it to good use ourselves. We had some edge transit rolls. We knew that this was the time and place to go ahead and put a lot of them on there, in there. Bungie. Uh, so we now have those, thankfully, uh, in safekeeping now for the arrival of the witness. We're ready. Never hurts. All right, everyone. Well, thank you all so much for taking time, taking the time to join us today. Uh, we'll see you back here next week at the same bungee time, same bungee place. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you all star side. Yeah, that was a good dev stream. That's awesome. Oh, goodness. This is like looking more significant than a season. Like, it's kind of crazy. <sighs> to think if they didn't delay the final shape, we wouldn't have this. So it definitely seems like a way to win back some community, uh... Community, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Um, we'll see if it works, though. Um, it's looking, looking to be good, though, especially for free. But it's all reused assets. <laughs> um... But yeah, it seems really cool. I like the idea of uh, the limited edition weapons. I wish they weren't actually limited edition and they were just super rare drops forever, but I'll grind them all out. Um, but uh, yeah, some cool we cool weapons returning. I'm excited for uh, Recluse and Mountaintop again. And you know what? And the more I think about it, I don't think Mountaintop will be that bad in the Crucible because uh, the special ammo is not nearly as abundant as it used to be. Especially back when Mountaintop was, you know, part of the meta. Um, so, yeah, I think it'll be alright. I think, I think it's cool that um, they're bringing back a lot of reprised stuff from, like, Forsaken and earlier. And uh, I do think it's weird that they're bringing back the raid weapons that are still in the game. And, and are craftable at that. But, uh, that's fine. 
I mean, it's a way for free-to-play players to get some get some raid loot, I suppose. Um, yeah, it won't, won't hit also. True. <laughs> Forbearance. Yeah, I don't know why. Forbearance is funny to me. But that would get new, newer players or returning players into a, into a meta weapon for the raid or whatever, which is nice. And I'm sure Final Shape will have a ton of really good weapons, too. And it seems like moving forward, they're going to make all random roles enhanceable. It's just kind of what it seems like. Everything during the mid-season patch, I think, is enhanceable. Um, or will be enhanceable. And they said that all of these weapons are going to be enhanceable as well. So that's really cool. Um, I want to see more of the Horde mode, because I'm really excited for the Horde mode. Um, so hopefully they... I don't know if they said they're going to show more of that next week. I don't think they did. They did talk about exotic mission and craftable weapons. I do wonder if they're bringing back Whisper and maybe Hawkmoon. Or maybe just one of them. I don't know. Or uh, even Outbreak, Outbreak would be sick as well. Um, who knows what they're going to do. But yeah. So hopefully I'll remember to actually actually get up next week for the next dev stream but uh i i keep forgetting i don't know why it's just like oh yeah there's a stream i gotta watch this week and then i forget about it on monday night it's like oh oops that's right but it's okay but yeah and yeah edge transit i love that they brought back edge transit because that thing is so funny i like how they called it the uh the damage meta and then they said just kidding and then they filled their entire vault with it, which is exactly how it was back in Forsaken. That's how many edge transits you got. You fill a whole vault in a day, bro. But yeah, anyway, guys, I will probably be back with... Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'll do Final Fantasy or not today, but definitely Honkai Star Rail. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go for now. But thanks so much for watching, guys. I will